Hey fellow Terrarians, this is part 2 of our alchemy guide for beginners. If you haven't seen the first part yet, please make sure to check out the description down below. Uh, the first part we talked about obtaining, planting and harvesting herbs and, f and plants. In this part we're going to talk about flasks and buff potions. Alright, so note that I'm placing fences inside my plant farm. That is to prevent mobs from spawning, obviously, but additionally, this does not prevent plants from growing, right? So they will grow just as fast with fences in. Um, unlike walls, if you place walls, it, the walls will slow down uh, your herbs growth. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now note that we have an imbuing station and alchemy table here. So imbuing station, you get it from your witch doctor, post queen bee. And uh, alchemy table, obviously, we get post Skeletron from the dungeon. So fishing potion requires crispy honey and water leaf. So crispy honey blocks can be obtained by mixing lava and liquid honey. Uh, that's why at the beginning it's, it may be a little bit difficult to obtain, but you can also get it as a random reward for doing fishing quests from your angler. Okay, crate potion. This is critical for, for all your fishing needs, obviously, because it allows you to get to catch more crates. So crate potion requires um, moon glow, shiver thorn, water leaf, as well as amber. Okay, so amber here is critical. Amber can be obtained from, by using the extractinator from silt slush, as well as uh, desert fossil. However, it, you can also find amber randomly inside the underground desert. Okay, so and you only need one amber to start growing your own underground um, amber trees. Okay, so that's quite easy. It's easy to make a permanent and an infinite supply of crate potions. Okay, so crate potions are invaluable, especially at the very beginning of the game. Okay, sonar is another critical potion, I think, if you know, highly recommend it in if you do um, any fishing during Terraria playthrough. Okay, so it needs coral and water leaf. It's easy to obtain. Coral, obviously, you can obtain uh, the bottom of the oceans. Okay, so a sonar essentially lets you see uh, what fish you're going to catch. Okay, so this way you can be selective about it. All right, guys, next one is Obsidian Skin Potion. Obsidian Skin Potion is mandatory for exploration of underworld of course and requires a few things here uh, fire blossom water leaf and obsidian obsidian is essentially obtained by mixing lava and water all right luck okay so there is there are three luck potions okay so um, lesser luck luck and greater luck Okay, so all three require two critical components. Ladybugs, who, ladybugs can be obtained by using uh, um, bug net during windy days in the forest biome. Now, you also will need pearls. So white pearls for lesser, uh, black for uh, normal luck potions and pink for greater luck potions. Okay, so pearls can only be obtained by fishing in the desert. Okay, so and from oysters, so opening oysters. And the pink one is the rarest. You probably are not gonna get too many of those. And even if you do, I strongly suggest selling those because they each of those is about 30 gold to sell. Okay, so it's much better to use those for, for extra gold other than just, you know, for your luck. Luck affects multiple aspects of the game. That includes your damage, the damage you, you get, the damage you deal, uh, as well as uh, spawn rates of rare enemies and drop rates of rare items. So luck is very important in Terraria since 1.4. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so moving on to Regeneration Potion. This one can be obtained very early on in game. So day bloom and mushroom is all you need. Mushrooms are randomly available across the forest, this, the surface of the forest biomes, right? Across your map. So and you can always harvest those without too much trouble. Swiftness potion. 
So this potion only needs cactus and blink root. Okay, so that's fairly easy to, to obtain. And gills. Gills requires water leaf and coral. So for that, at least for, for coral, you need to, to reach the ocean first. Um, gills is very useful during mining as well as um, exploring the bottom of the ocean. Okay, iron skin. Iron skin is fairly common. Increases your defense by eight. And you can craft it by using either lead or iron and day bloom. So again, very easy to craft, uh, very useful early on and throughout the game. You're probably gonna use it all the time. Okay, let's move on. The next potion is Spelunker. Spelunker is super useful, especially early game. This is your go-to potion pretty much for getting your uh, life crystals and finding ores and whatnot. So this requires a gold or platinum or and as a, as well as moon glow and blink root so not too hard to get the components to to, to craft those potions but uh, it can be difficult at first and usually um, those potions are also available in random underground golden chests and stuff so it, it is possible to get those just through a general looting okay next one is a little bit tricky invisibility potion so you you drink it you become invisible problem is you're you're invisible to yourself but not necessarily always to enemies so once you move around enemies do see you and i find this very annoying because once you're invisible you can't it's very hard to see where you are and what you're doing especially if you're navigating across you know a labyrinth underground so it, you can get stuck easily so that potion i find it far less useful than what the name kind of suggests okay so moving on moving on to the next one shine potion okay so shine potion is super useful for navigating the world in the dark or mining or even fighting bosses at night right so this lets you see enemies when they're coming too close if you don't have hunter potions yet and you only need glowing mushroom and day bloom to craft one again it's highly useful for 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 digging for mining for night travel nighttime travel and fighting bosses and events all right so this potion i use it all the time through all my playthroughs same with night owl potion as well it, the two complement each other especially when you're on the surface and so that basically gives you a field of extra field of vision and it allows you to see mobs you know if you're not using hunter potion at the moment so only need day bloom and blink root okay battle potion so battle potion is needed to increase spawn rates of enemies and all all that is required to craft one is deathweed and rotten chunk if you're in corruption or vertebra if you were in crimson so both of this potion is super useful and um, especially when you're farming for rare items or you just need a lot of a lot of crafting materials that drop from certain mobs so this is good for afk farming and essentially this potion you will be using throughout the game i guarantee you okay next one water walking potion so this one needs uh, shark fin and water leaf so to obtain shark fin obviously you need to travel to the ocean and and look for rare mobs sharks the easiest way to actually farm shark fins is uh, by finding shark statues and then connecting those to timers and, and creating a grinder maybe with lava trap or something like that so it's quite easy to get hundreds of, of fins in in a few minutes with those methods okay so because again sharks are rare and they're rare in the ocean so in their heart in, in they're tough enemies that take time to kill okay archery potion super useful for rangers of course all you need is um, lens and day bloom and lens are fairly common they drop from um, demon eyes at night next one is one of my favorite potions in terraria hunter potion so this lets you see both enemies and friendly creatures on the map okay so this is super useful needs uh, shark fins day bloom and blink root so hunter potion i use it during boss fights i use it pretty much throughout the game for exploring the map if whether it's hardcore run or a normal run 
it's very useful all the time. For example, when you're fighting Skeletron, it lets you see both the, the spinning head and the hands of, of Skeletron. So this allows you to you know, time your actions better. It also uh, highlights all the enemies around you so you can navigate easier. So one of the best potions, in my opinion, one of the most useful potions in Terraria. Okay, Gravitation Potion, guys. This potion is super useful early on and later on it, it people use it in some in both fights you definitely can can leverage this in some hard fights you can also use it during the early game explore to explore the map especially the top levels of the map and find those sky islands and sky lakes and and so on so it requires among other ingredients it requires harpy feathers okay so harpy feathers you can only obtain by farming harpies fire blossom Deathweed and blink root are easy to obtain, but harpy feathers early on you may have some struggle. Okay, still this potion is craftable, um, and you can probably craft it pre-boss, pretty much, right? So, and I highly recommend getting those potions. You can also get them from from chests, from golden chests, exploring the under the underground. Okay, another super useful potion is builder. Builder potion only needs three herbs basically blink root shiver thorn and moon glow and this is invaluable for placement for block placement and range any kind of building in terraria you better use this potion and the best thing is to combine it with the bricklayer or gizmo pack okay next one is danger sense only need shiver thorn and web cobwebs that's all. Danger Sense is also my go-to, one of the you know, probably five top five potions for me early game, especially when playing hardcore, because you definitely want to see those boulder traps and and any other trap on the in any any dangerous uh, object on the map. Okay, so next one is mining. Mining potion only needs two ingredients: blink root and uh, antlion mandible. Antlion mandibles can only be obtained in the desert by farming antlions. Okay, so next one is Flipper. Flipper potion only needs uh, Shiver Thorn and Water Leaf. It allows you to move swiftly in, in liquids. Actually quite useful, but it's very situational. I mean, how many times do you actually need to swim in the ocean? All right, Gender Change potion, uh, the name speaks for itself. Uh, basically, you need all seven herbs in order to craft this potion. All right, so, all right guys, moving to the next one. Heart Reach Potion, extremely useful. It's one of the probably five top used potions uh, during boss fights, to, especially in hard mode, throughout the game pretty much. So only need Crimson Tiger Fish and Daybloom. Crimson Tiger Fish can only be obtained by fishing in Crimson. Okay, so this can be done regardless of which evil biome you have present in your in your world. Okay, so even if you start in corruption, it is possible to get crimson in hard mode. Okay, so this potion, and then obviously this potion can be obtained by looting chests, golden chests across the game, so across the world. That's why um, you're probably going to have it regardless of which which evil you have in your world. Okay, so calming potion. This potion requires damselfish and baybloom. Damselfish can only be obtained by fishing in sky lakes. Okay, so uh, this potion reduces, decreases enemy spawn rates. Very useful. Okay, so next one is, is great for rangers. Ammo reservation potion. And so 20% chance not to consume ammo. So it requires double cod, which is fishing. Basically, you, you get it by fishing in the jungle, surface jungle. And also needs moon glow, so yeah, uh, this is easy to get. Next potion is highly useful. It's rage potion, increases critical chance by 10%. It's useless for um, summoners, but pretty much every other class benefits from it greatly. It requires hammer piranha and deathweed. So hammer piranha can only be obtained by fishing and crimson. Um, and again, even if your wor world has evil. Uh, corruption is the primary evil. You can still get this uh, potion either through uh, by cr from crates or by fishing and crimson in hard mode. 
Okay, so Wrath Potion is the opposite of Rage Potion. It can only be obtained by fishing in, in Corruption. Okay, Ebonkoi is the fish that you're after and as well as Deathweed. Okay, so Ebonkoi, again, this can be only obtained by fishing in Corruption. And even if your world, world has Crimson, right, so you can still get Corruption biomes, uh, artificial biome in, in hard mode once you um, you defeat Wall of Flesh. Inferno Potion. This is extremely useful, okay, but situational. So Flare Fin Koi and Obsidian Fish, both of these can only be obtained by fishing in lava. Doesn't have to be underworld, you can set up an artificial lava biome uh, pond uh, on the surface for convenience. Okay, so this potion lets you, um, and probably a, a be better demonstrate, okay, so it, yeah, it creates a protective fire shield uh, circle around you. That, that circle essentially damages any mobs that pass through. It actually destroys some um, projectiles, um, especially, you know, Eater of World uh, Vile Spit that uh, can easily be destroyed by that. So this is super handy during boss fights as well. All right, so this potion is recommended, and as well as you know, fighting bosses like Duke, Duke Fisheron. So detonating bubbles that he shoots uh, can can be destroyed, especially in normal mode, can be destroyed by this. Okay, potion of return. This is um, another useful potion. It's it's relatively new, added in 1.4. So this potion for that you need potion of recall and obsidian fish. Obsidian fish, as I mentioned, can only be obtained by fishing in lava. Okay, so this potion, let me just demonstrate the way it works. So let's just say you're somewhere in the underworld and you decide to go back for a moment, but you wanna come back to this very spot. So you use the uh, potion of recall and as you notice here, it, it leaves this portal. So now if you right click this portal, when you're ready to go back, you will be teleported back to the underworld to the same, the very same spot. Okay, let's see. Boom, you're back. Okay, so moving on, uh, um, potions, two potions for mages, mana regeneration and uh, magic power. So mana regen requires fallen stars, day bloom and moon glow. So this is your bread and butter if you're a mage. Okay, so uh, magic po power potion increases your magic damage by 20%. This is another must have potion if you are a mage. And again, uh, Fallen Star, Deathweed, and Moonglow. So with these two potions, mages pretty much uh, are set. Okay, um, another few potions here, Thor Thorns. Thorns is um, rarely used actually, but it could be quite effective in some situations. It requires Stinger, uh, Wormtooth, Cactus, and Deathweed. Okay, Wormtooth can only be obtained in worlds um, with corruption okay so but again um, you can still find it in, in in chests this potion is available in golden chests uh, as, a, as a loot random loot and you can still craft it in hard mode once you are able to create an artificial corrupt corruption biome okay so this potion again this is it's situational um, melee characters can actually benefit from it if you're if you're letting yourself get hit multiple times okay another commonly used potion is endurance endurance potion requires only two ingredients armored cave fish and blink root armored cave fish can be obtained by fishing in the cavern layer okay so that is uh, it's quite it's qu quite common common fish okay so not a big deal to to get quite a few of those okay so titan titan potion increase your knockback Okay, so this needs uh, it. Uh, yeah, it needs bones, deathweed, and shiver thorn. So this is a post skeleton potion if you want to craft it. Um, you can also find it randomly in in chests uh, throughout the world. Now let's quickly go over the flasks. Okay, so pre hard mode, you can only craft two flasks. Okay, so the flask of poison and the flask of fire. Okay, so you 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 need imbuing station for that, of course. And for flask, for flask of poison, you need stingers, and for the flask of fire, you need hellstone. Okay, so both of these flasks are highly useful for for melee characters as well as summoners using whips. 
Okay, so it gives you 20 minutes of imbued power. In hard mode, you can get a few other flasks, obviously, but in pre-hard mode, there's only two. All right, fellow Terrarians, we've covered a lot of potions today and some flasks. So hopefully things are a little bit more uh, clear for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Other than that, um, let me know if you want to see any, any other guides. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.